Hello everybody. In this series of videos I'm going to be explaining how to model a spur gear. Uh, this will be a, a working spur gear. You may be able to make it in steel or wood or whatever. <clears throat> but if you make uh, two of them they should mesh together properly and work as a pair of gears. Now the main thing to get right in making a gear is the profile of the tooth which is an involute curve. Now part of the tutorial is how to construct an involute curve. Now I'm not going to say much about the theory of gearing that's a whole new topic on its own and there's lots of information on the web uh, that you can look at in order to understand the theory of uh, gear wheels, gear teeth, loading on gear wheels and that kind of thing. It's a very complicated exercise to get your head round. I'm mainly concerned with producing a 3D model, an accurate 3D model. So here we go with the first episode in how to construct a 3D model of a gear wheel in Design Spark Mechanical. For those of you who wish to learn how to calculate the parameters for the gear, uh, you need to go to this site, Involute Curve Drafting a Gear in Car and Applications by Nick Carter. All you need to do is go to cartertools.com as shown down here and not only is there the information about how we're going to calculate the parameters for this spur gear but there's a whole host of other engineering sets of information for the other projects so it is quite a, a nice site to know about but we're going to be using the calculations used in this example on the web page for Carter Tools. Here are the calculations that have been worked out for this particular gear and it's going to have a 16 millimeter diameter pitch, 20 teeth, a 14 and a half degree pressure angle and it's going to be an involute spur gear. So with those parameters we're going to work out all the dimensions we need to construct this gear wheel. So here are my calculations using the information on Nick Carter's website. And these are the values we're going to be using to construct the involute curve. From the information we see that the first task is to construct the set of circles on which we can base the spur gear. We need the root diameter DR, base circle diameter DB, pitch diameter D and the outside diameter DO. So this is what we'll do first. But before we do anything we're going to set some options. Design Spark Options Now in Popular we need to ensure that the rendering quality is the highest We've got lowest, highest, 10 we want that high, we want that aliasing high also And that's all on that page Appearance, we can accept defaults, selection, that's all right, facets fine, 1%, power selection, snap, there again that is, we going to accept the defaults for the snaps, now units, we need to change the units, now we're going to change them for this document alone you can have either all new documents or 
this document. So we're going to leave it at this document. We want imperial inches, decimal inches, degrees, pounds, that's irrelevant for this tutorial. And density also, symbol IN for inches. You can have a one of those, but we'll leave it at IN. Now the primary position, we want to increase this to 5. And angular precision, we want that to 2. Might as well have trailing zeros. And the rest are all right. That comes out of 1 8 to the 8 number in the grid lines. That's fine. We'll OK that. Now we can go ahead and draw our circles. And the first circle we're going to do is the pitch diameter, which is 1.25. We've got the snap the grid on. That's all right. 1.25. Next is the outside diameter, which is 1.375. Base circle diameter 1.2102. One 1.2102. Finally, root diameter 1.1054. 1.1054. Now on the Carter Tools information, what they do is they make a construct a line with a little leg on it, and then duplicate that 14 more times. And these are little extensions, little legs here, are going to form. The, the string that is more or less unwound from the, the base diameter but I'm not going to do it that way because Design Spark Mechanical doesn't lend itself to extending these lines very neatly I'm going to show you what I think is a, a relatively easy way of doing it and it also explains a few things that Design Spark can, can do quite nicely so I'm just going to put uh, these radius lines in and then add the these unwound string bits one at a time. So I'll select the line tool and our first line from the center to the base circle. There. Now we're going to make quite a few duplications of these, 14 of them to be exact, 15 in all. So to do this we're going to select it, select the move tool, drag this to the center, select create patterns and now we're going to start rotating this. Now we're not going to wait until we'll get radial lines all round we're just going to go to about here then it's highlighting the angle between the two lines so we've got 14 gaps of 2.86 degrees if we look on my little chart uh, which is in total 40.4 now tab and that fixes that angle. Now unfortunately it's covering the count. So we'll just we'll just see it, we'll just click it. So now the count is two, that one and that one. We need fifteen of them, which are are notionally designated zero to fourteen. So 15, 
return. And there we are, 15 of them. Now these lines are notionally numbered 0 to 14. So remember that, because that's quite important. Now this represents from there to there a piece of string wrapped around the circumference from there to there and we're going to unwind it bit by bit and see where that end of that string ends up and that's the that will trace out the involute curb curve that we need for the gear tooth. Okay that's enough for part one. Please subscribe and I will see you in part 2. Bye.